I think that in the field of activity in which we operate, uh, we are the dominant player, I think, just about in every geography. Um, but having said that, we still haven't got sig you know, um, significant market share, we've got a reasonable market share. And so I think as we scale up and as you know, opportunities and difficult conditions are good for us, because obviously that impacts our competitors. So yeah, I think from our, from our point of view, I think we're doing better now than we did a year ago, certainly. You make the comment that your businesses are right-sized for the new economic reality. What do you believe that new economic reality is? Well, it's a very difficult thing to define because obviously that's maybe by branch, by region, by geography and, and the like. But I think what we did do um, coming into the year 2010 was we decided when, during our budgeting process to create a quality company. So we were more concerned about having quality sales where we could collect the book, uh, quality expense management, quality uh, credit management. And so I think that those benefits translated in this particular financial year. So we had less bad debts, if you could call it that. Um, expense base was lower. Our sales revenues may have been a little bit off, and maybe the growth levels weren't as good as we would have hoped, but certainly the quality of sales were good. And uh, from our point of view, going forward, I think we'll even have you know, even a better performance in that regard. If I stay with this new economic reality theme, if you look at scenario planner Clem Sumter saying that one of the scenarios that may pan out is this hard time scenario where we're going to languish at lower levels across the world for longer. Would you buy into that scenario? Yeah, I, I, you know, whatever the scenario is, and, and that may well be one of them. I mean, the issue at the end of the day is that we don't own 100% of any market. And therefore, the conditions in the market you know, don't necessarily translate directly into our performance. And so poor economic conditions for me is no real excuse for us to have a bad year. And so if you, I think the mindset of, of the Bidvest employees and management is that we will use whatever conditions there are for us to be able to get out the best possible for performance. Deflation, you have mentioned the word a couple of times in your verbiage. Where are you seeing the, the biggest deflationary trends? Well, the biggest deflation fact, of course, is the currency and, uh, and its impact on certain, for example, in euros, impact on inventory. But having said all of that, I don't think we have we've managed that process. Uh, we obviously are not managing the process of the RAND appreciation for subsidiaries. And of course, the impact of the way financial statements work and the way you account for foreign currencies, of course, that's that's been negative for us in this particular year. But if you have a look at it from a sitting outside of South Africa, you looked at our results in dollars or in some other foreign currency, our results would be even better. So it depends where you sit. So, you know, if, you know, on the one hand, you say, well, there's an impact of the RAND and it's made our results worse. But in international terms, our performance is even better. Much is being made of the strong RAND and how it is impacting companies that have export focused businesses out of South Africa. How would you react if we did see some interference, management from the South African Reserve Bank, uh, where the local unit is concerned? Well, look, I don't think you can manipulate markets. I think uh, they have to t obviously find their own levels. But I do think that there's certainly for me you know, quite a bit of capacity to reduce interest rates. I think what we have to do for South Africa is we have to create jobs. And unfortunately, from our perspective in the last year, we shed quite a few. And to get them back takes a long time because businesses re engineer themselves and the efficiencies change and to re-employ somebody that's been dismissed takes a long time and that's a factor. You set out in these results that you had a better half but you have said that the World Cup effect was disappointing where Bidvest is con concerned but there were some businesses in the fold that did benefit directly from the World Cup. Can you give me a little colour on that? Well, yeah, I think that you know the impact on Bidvest's overall result for the whole year is probably somewhere in the order of a quarter, quarter of a percent in headline earnings growth. Second half, it obviously be a bit bigger, just over half a percentage point. But you know, when I say it's bad, I think the issue is that you, if you're translating that uh, into financial results in the very short period of the one month, I think that the impact of the World Cup over the medium term will be significantly better for us financially than it was in the, in, in this, in the one month. I think what we misread, and I think probably many others did, was the behavior of the domestic population in relation to the World Cup. So a lot of activity happened in Gauteng, very little in the coastal zones. Natal's hotel occupancies in, in, in June were lower this year than they were in the previous year, despite the World Cup. And also a lot of um, the fans you know, flew in for the game, flew out back home. There were a lot of charters from Argentina 
They came for the game, they went home. So they didn't stay in hotels, they didn't eat, there was no real impact. Whilst we counted them as foreign visitors, the impact financially was very little. And then of course the domestics never traveled. We got sucked into the World Cup, it was fantastic. Um, but the impact, of course, uh, economically was very little, you know, certainly for us anyway. When you say the benefit will be seen over the medium term, can you take me further on that thought? Well, I think, I think from a South Africa standpoint, I think South African image was hugely enhanced over the world for the World Cup. And I think that we will see more foreign tourists, you know, given the RAND. We'll see more foreign tourists here. We'll see a lot of benefit coming out of it over the medium term. And I think it was, uh, you know, I'm sure you'll agree, it was a fantastic month. Even through the, the tough economic period, you have still been making acquisitions. And let's bring to the fore Noaco and the Eastern European businesses. Can you, uh, they were included in the results from the 1st of July 2009. Are you going to continue on the acquisition strategy? Yeah, and look, um, Nawaco had its pluses and minuses. I mean, whilst it contributed on the one hand to our operating profit, all of the benefit was negated in, uh, in the costs. I mean, the cost of doing that acquisition was 60 odd million rand. And of course, under new IFRS rules, we write that off as a cost against headline earnings. So that was, you know, a one timer. Uh, you know, whilst we say we do do these things in bad times, you know, if you take the, the cost of doing the acquisition today versus what we would have done it a year ago, you know, in appreciation terms, the RAND's appreciated against the euro by 20%. So whilst it may have been good uh, then, it may not be as, as great now. I'm talking about in acquisition cost terms. So you, one can't forecast all these events all the time. So you have to concentrate on some of the basic things. Make sure that the fundamentals of the deal that you're doing work for you. And uh, Nowaco is going to be great. And, uh, you know, Faritex, which was part of the same deal, Poland, I really, I rate Poland for an upgrade. I think Poland has got such a lot of opportunity. Uh, yeah, so it will be great for us. Trading, Trading margin down. from 4.6% in the prior period to 5.1%. Are we looking at a stable margin at these levels or can you push that line further? Well, as I said, uh, you know, from our point of view, we were looking f f to a quality performance and that, of course, you know, had the impact of improving our margins. So we, you know, consciously you know, did less sales in certain areas. And uh, of course, this has improved. And yeah, I think it's sustainable. And I think there is some room for, for even for further improvement. There seems to be a trend at the moment in the Bidvest brand getting recognition and, and being attached to the operating companies. Is that a concerted effort from your side? You know, we were, as I, you know, one of our primary um, business uh, uh, philosophies is decentralization. So we don't have any push from our side for people to adopt or use Bidvest as part of their brand. But what is incredible about it is this Bidvest pride and this move initiated by businesses themselves to incorporate Bidvest into their brand name. So if you take, for example, our food service operations in South Africa, that's in the process of being rebranded totally Bidvest, uh, which is the same as it is in other parts of the world. Uh, and there are some that are using a, you know, a mixture of Bidvest, Bidvest Prestige and, and the like. So there's a pride in using this Bidvest brand. And I think there is a lot of recognition with the football club, uh, other things. They're adding to this momentum. And I'm sure that uh, you'll see over time an initiative from us to be able to promote it even further. Bidvest food services benefited from strong demand out of Asia Pacific. Do you subscribe to the theory that China is going to save the world? It's going to make up for the shortfall from the developed environment. Well, and that may well be. But as I said, from my, from my point of view, uh, each of our operations uh, has got a market to operate in. Each of the circumstances under which each one operates are different. And from my point of view, we have strong enough and smart enough management to get the best out of what we've got. And, uh, you know, the playing field is not always the best. So you have to work with what you've got. And uh, from my perspective, we don't, as I said, we don't own 100 percent. And when, until the time that we do, there's opportunity. But strong demand specifically out of Asia Pacific, do you think that, that we're going to see that continuing from a food perspective as internal yeah. consumption continues to gain in strength? Yeah, and I think as those countries westernize. For us, obviously, we don't sell noodles in China. I mean, it's not a business for us. It's very difficult to do that. But as the more five-star hotels open, as more westernization of, of those particular zones happen, of course, our opportunity gets bigger and bigger. And we've got three or four operations in, in mainland China. 
And it's quite amazing. I mean, they're small, but we've had 100% growth and uh, we will continue those operations all being well and obviously us being able to manage it over the medium term offer a lot of opportunity.